Hi, welcome to this video on Civil War era ciphers. So let's say you wanted to communicate with another group in your army, and you wanted to send a message that's about maybe troop movement or locations, dates and times of attacks, things like that. Now the thing is, is you always have to assume that when that message is sent, that it will be intercepted by the enemy. Now if it's intercepted, it's going to be putting a lot at risk. So before you send this message, you want to encrypt it. So disguise the message in a way that the person intercepting the message can't read it. Now during the war, the Union and the Confederates had their own types of ciphers. So we're going to talk about those two in a moment. Now really simple ways of disguising messages would be to just replace important words with random words. So we could replace Lincoln uh, with the word oak tree. If the enemy was able to figure out that oak tree meant Lincoln, then your message isn't very secure. So the two types of ciphers we're going to talk about, the Union used a cipher called the route cipher, and then the Confederates used a cipher wheel. So let's go ahead and start with the Confederate cipher wheel. The Confederacy cipher wheel is a pretty simple wheel to make. Um, so in this case, I just made mine out of two circles of cardboard. The Confederate cipher wheel is made up of two wheels. You'll have a small one and a larger one where the small one is laid on top of the large one. The letters of the alphabet are written around the edges of both wheels. The outside letters refer to the plain text. This is the original message. The inside letters refer to the cipher text. This is the encrypted message. So how does it work? First thing is we're going to set the wheels so that the outside A points to the inside A. Notice that when I rotate the wheel, A will now point to a different letter. So here it now points to B. This is considered a shift of 1. Now it's set to C. This is considered a shift of 2. D has a shift of 3, E has a shift of 4, and so on. Just remember that the shift is the number of letters away from A. Once you choose a shift, or we'll call it a key, we can start encrypting and decrypting our message. Let's consider the following message. Move to Lincoln's Baltimore departure time to 2 a.m. Now the first thing we need is a key. Now this key has to be agreed upon by both parties. So let's say we had a shift key of 17. Next, we need to set our cipher wheel so that A points to A. Let's rotate the wheel 17 spaces. Now you can either move the inside wheel 17 spaces to the left, or you can move the outside wheel 17 spaces to the right. These are equivalent, and now you're going to have A pointing to R. Now that the wheel is set, we can start encrypting the message. Find the letter M on the plain text wheel. Again, this is the outer wheel. Write down the corresponding letter in the ciphertext wheel. See that it points to D? So under the M in the original message, we will write the letter D. Now find the letter O in the plain text wheel. You're going to write down the corresponding letter in the ciphertext wheel. It points to F. So we're going to write F under the O. Let's go ahead and find V. See that it points to M? So now we're going to write V under the M. We're going to continue this process until you've finished all the letters of the message. Okay, so we've encrypted our message. We sent it away, and we received a response. Again, it's been encrypted using the key of 17. So let's go ahead and decrypt it and see what the response was. All right, we received the following encrypted message. It starts with T, Y, R, E, X, V, and so on. So let's set the cipher wheel back to A, A. And since our shift key is 17, we're going to shift the outer wheel to the right 17 spaces. So A is now pointing to R. We're going to find T on the cipher text wheel. Again, this is the inner wheel. The corresponding letter on the plain text wheel is C. Again, plain text wheel is on the outside. So now I'm going to put C under the T. Next, we're going to find Y on the cipher text wheel. The corresponding letter on the plain text wheel is H. We're going to put H under the Y. Find R on the cipher text wheel. Its corresponding letter on the plain text wheel is A. We're going to continue doing this on the cipher wheel. Eventually, we will decrypt the message to the following. Change your plans. Attack tonight. Now you've seen an example of how the cipher wheel works. Uh, now the Confederates didn't do a single shift because Otherwise, there's only 25 possible shifts with the letters of our alphabet. And so it doesn't take that long for us to do it by hand, and a computer can almost do it instantly. So 
it's not very secure. Now the Confederates made their cipher more challenging than the one we just did. When we were doing ours, every time we encrypted one letter to another, we always used the shift key 17. So what makes theirs better is every time that they encrypted one letter to another, they didn't always use the shift key 17. Maybe it alternated. So maybe on one letter it was the shift of 17, and then the next letter it was a shift of 4. Then back to 17, and then back to 4 again. So anyways, that's how the Confederates worked the cipher wheel. Let's go ahead and talk about how the Union used the route cipher. The Union's approach to encrypting messages was very different than how the Confederates did theirs. So let's take the same message that we used with the Confederate cipher, which is moved Lincoln's Baltimore departure time to 2 a.m. The route cipher is about rearranging the words in a phrase so that we get something very jumbled. So the Union had a very systematic way of doing this. We are going to come up with a grid. Now the grid has a number of rows and a number of columns. Now they use code words to determine how many rows and columns we have. But for the sake of this video, we're going to use a 3x3 three three grid. So let's take the phrase, moved Lincoln's Baltimore departure time to 2 a.m. We're going to put that in a 3x3 three three grid, writing the words down each row. And when you run out of columns, you move on to the next row. And this route cipher was pretty straightforward. Instead of reading the words from left to right, we are now going to read them down the column. But notice in the grid, we have one empty space left at the bottom right. And so they use filler words. And again, each code word had their own filler words that everyone knew because it was in their code book. Uh, but for us, let's just use the word cherry. OK, to encrypt the message, let's go ahead and read down the column. Our encrypted message reads, All right, they responded to my message, so they sent me an encrypted message right here. And the message says, change at plans midnight, we love attack Apple. Okay. Now, I know that this message was encrypted using a 2 by 4 grid, so two rows and four columns. So to decrypt it, instead of putting the words in a row, we're going to put the words down the columns. So we'll start with the first column, which now has says change at. The second column will have plans midnight. Third column will have we love. And the fourth column would be attack apple. And now I can read off the row, and I have the following message. Change plans, we attack at midnight. Love, apple. So I'm going to assume that the love apple are those filler words uh, that we know was associated with this grid. All right, so that's a simple way of using a route cipher. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching these videos. Have fun decrypting. Thanks.